Now this time it's ryegrass viewed with fiber optic lighting from above showing its collapsicated state ryegrass pollen freshly tapped off the grass itself. And you can see that bulge where the is trying to push out through the pore. Now there's one pouring out the granules and the time is 1 minute 50 seconds. I've seen it happen quicker with the rye grass and these are ready to pop. They're still bulging away but they haven't burst yet and here here's a better one just pouring out and in fact most of them are pouring out now. Isn't that great fun? Seeing things really happening in front of your very eyes and being able to demonstrate it. Oh, there's, there's a very bulgy one. There must be some sort of operculum there which is holding it in. There's a very, very dense accumulation there and the time is 6 minutes 18 seconds. Now this is Coxfoot at 15 minutes, but it hasn't done very much more. This is ryegrass at 10 minutes. Just look at that. It really is the best yet. Terrific. Granules, granules everywhere. What do they mean? What do they do? Do they reach the alveoli? They certainly could reach the smaller bronchi. We know that they have starch in them. But we don't know really very much about them. Would it be able to filter them out and dissociate them from the rest of the extract? I've already shown that the first two minutes of extraction is what matters and that the rest that comes out later is not important. This observation was based on the fact that when you provoke people with dry grass pollen, the effects are practically instantaneous, just like pepper. So the important allergens must be eluted on the nasal mucosa immediately. This is really the best I have ever seen. Gosh, look at that. Most of the pollen grains have emptied themselves. So rye pollen, as observed in Australia, is a prolific producer of granules. But if isotonic solutions do not do this, this is really tremendous. They've just ebbed. It doesn't happen after a few, about a week or two. Got to be fresh. I'm just going to try a 40 lens and see what it does. Gosh. Oh yes. <laughs> That's quite something. It's a very big magnification. Now lastly, here is the field with rye grass at 45 minutes. It was like this at half an hour also. And uh, everything has degranulated. They've all spewed out their contents. I wish we knew what it meant. Now, finally, there's another type of pollen which degranulates beautifully and dramatically, and that is Rose Bay Willow Herb. And here it is. And there we have it just after wetting. Ready to go. Oh, there it's going. Degranulating like crazy. It's pouring out. There it goes. And there's another one that's popping off. And that's rather good. We really, these are really fun. Now here we have some granules on the 40 objective. We seem to have some long ones and the round ones. They're just like motile bacteria. There's, there we are, it's a very good one. I can hardly believe that's just brownian movement. 
think it's more than that. Lastly, here is an actual photograph of Dr. Charles Harrison Blackley, MD, of Manchester, England. Born 1820, died 1900. He was the pioneer who first proved the cause of hay fever by putting pollen up his own nose at the time. He also did the first pollen count and studied the area biology of pollen. He also invented the skin test and proved by testing his own skin that pollen was the cause of his problem. This pioneer was forgotten until about 1959 when his monograph was reprinted for the European Allergy Congress in London in 1959.